Hey everyone and welcome back to The Week's Nest. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how I transformed this free bookcase that my neighbor so nicely gave me. And not only am I gonna show you how I redid it, super easy, I'm also gonna show you how I styled it and organized it for my craft room. So let's get started. So originally I was going to paint this bookcase white, my usual, and then I was on Pinterest and I really liked how a lot of bookcases were styled with like a peel and stick wallpaper on the back. So I decided to go a little bit out of my usual like color palette and I decided to leave this bookcase as is. It had really good bones and it was pretty. Just the back of it kind of was warped. So I decided to use this peel and stick beautiful floral wallpaper I picked up from Hobby Lobby. This was about $34.99 and you cannot use a coupon on this, but it's really good quality. It was easy to apply and I even had a little bit left over that I even used on my craft table. This was actually the first time that I had used peel and stick wallpaper. So I made sure that I put the wallpaper up to the bookcase multiple times before making my cuts. It still didn't come out perfect, but I was happy with the minimal bubbles that I had with this project. Um, I will say that the back of this bookcase, like I said in the beginning of this video, was a little bit warped. So you'll see kind of some bumps on the bottom section, but I couldn't help that because it's just how the bookcase was. But the peel and stick wallpaper is such a great alternative to painting a piece. It gives it a new fresh look. It gives it a makeover while not having to paint it and kind of leaving a piece to its original character, which I love. Like I said, I really did not, I was having a little bit of difficulty on the top paint, or not painting it, so used to saying that, cutting it perfectly. But the biggest thing with peel and stick wallpaper is you just want, like you see here, the design to line up. So that's really what I focused on, trying to cut it as even as possible, but I'm not a professional, so it did not bother me. For the bottom, you'll see in a second, I decided to put these shelves back in and I was having a difficulty with that, of course. But for the bottom of the bookcase, what I decided to do differently, which I did not do for the top, was when I kind of eyeballed where I needed to make my cuts, I over measured a bit. So that way when I applied the peel and stick wallpaper, which you'll see here has a little bit of a bump because of the back of the bookcase, I was able to go in with my box cutter and cut off the excess. So it gave me a more um, straight and even line to the backing of the bookcase. And I wish I did this to the top because it really did just give a more even line and I didn't waste that much more wallpaper. It was just a little bit extra in the top, a little bit extra on the bottom, and I was able to cut it to have everything nice and even. And I'm just really loving this print, kind of the floral vibe against the dark wood. It kind of gives me a vintage feel, which I was unintentionally going for, but I'm really liking. All in all, this took me about maybe a half hour to do. So this is what the bookcase looks in my super messy garage. That's what it looks like. I'm gonna bring this in to my crafting area and I'm gonna show you how I styled this and also used it to organize some of my go-to crafting items. I've already started fall crafting and holiday crafting will be right after the corner or right around the corner. So I wanted to get my crafting room kind of in check a bit. So I love using recycled glass jars. I did a DIY on this jar a while ago, but I like using them to store things like wood blocks or beads or things that I grab often. So they both look decorative, but they also are functional. I can see what I actually have so I can use it. I wanted to share this video because I feel like bookcases are something that maybe a lot of us will get at a thrift store or have in our home. And sometimes if you're like me, you kind of are 
not sure what you want to do with it besides using it for books, but they are a great way to not only style some pretty decor, but you can use them kind of as like an open shelf organization for items like, for example, in your craft room. And for me, I wanted this to be pretty, but I also wanted it to be functional and store items that I grab for often when I am filming or just crafting a video. So since it is kind of back to school season, especially at Dollar Tree, these plastic book bins are like in abundance at most Dollar Trees. Although they may not be the color preference that you like, I was able to find one in black. I couldn't find another, so I just spray painted it. Um, not perfectly. I didn't really care what the inside looked like. I just wanted to make sure that the outside matched. They're great for scrapbook paper, stencils, um, books you may have, felt, anything like that. They are great for storage and also some of the back to school like pencil kind of caddies are great for paint pens, um, markers, stuff like that. So even if it's something may not be the color choice that you want, spray paint goes a long way. I love these Dollar Tree command hooks and I really like to use them as storage or a way to hang my glue guns. So I just took one of these. This is the larger pack. I believe it holds up to three or four pounds and I just pressed it on the backing of this bookcase and then I was able to hang two of my go-to glue guns. I have a newer Shore Bonder one that I've been using and this blue one that you probably see me use a lot in my videos was my grandma's. It's my favorite. It's also a Shore Bonder. So I put my two go-to glue guns there for easy access. Another Dollar Tree find are these kind of bright bins. So again, a little bit of spray paint goes a long way with these. I wanted these to be black, so I used a matte black plastic bonding spray paint. And I also made sure that I sprayed most of the inside of these so you don't see the blue. I love these bins. You can make them look decorative, but I love them to store all of those little Dollar Tree signs that us crafters get. Um, they kind of like collect a lot and it's just great to kind of put them all in one place. I can see them, but they're kind of all contained, which was the goal I had in mind with these. I had these two thrifted kind of bread baskets. Um, I thought these were great to store decoratively some go-to paints of mine. So I did the larger bin with some of my go-to chalk paints I use all the time in my videos. And the smaller one I thought was great for things like the Dollar Tree netting or some pom-poms, jute, just some type of things that are in a like category that I can see and grab easy. Also, I used this cereal container I've had forever. You can get these also at the Dollar Tree. Not exact, but the same kind of premise. And this is great for also storing ribbon. And don't feel like you have to leave the ribbon on, like the spool it's on. A lot of times, like you saw me do there, I will take it off the spool if I don't have a ton of ribbon left. And I will just fold it so I could still see it, but it's not taking up a whole bunch of room. Because I find that the spools that the ribbon is on, especially the thicker Dollar Tree ribbon, takes up a lot of space. Also decided to use this galvanized caddy I got a couple years back at Hobby Lobby on clearance. I got it for like under $10 and it was originally $50. It's super pretty as a decorative look, but it's great again for storing those go-to items when I craft. And like I said, I had leftover of this peel and stick wallpaper, not enough to cover my entire desk, but I have this desk and I don't often film on it because all the stuff you saw on the bookcase is what I usually keep on this desk. So I thought, why not move this stuff over to the bookcase next to my desk and actually sit down and use my desk to film so it's way more comfortable. And that is what I plan on doing now that I have the space freed up. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I didn't really show anything groundbreaking here for my first Transformation Tuesday, but I wanted to give you a easy, practical 
thrift flip that you could do with an item like a bookcase. Make it not only pretty, but make it functional. That's something I really go for a lot in my projects, in my decor. I love things that are pretty, but I like them to work for me and be functional. So that was the goal with this, and I definitely feel like I achieved that. And I was just so excited to receive this bookcase, like I said, from my neighbor for free. So I spent more money than I probably would have on the wallpaper, but you can also use peel and stick contact paper from Dollar Tree. You can paint it and use a stencil. The sky's the limit, but it's fun to recreate a piece and not feel like you have to paint the entire piece. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know down below, below if you did, and I hope you all are doing well, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.